hello everyone you are welcome to my youtube channel i am rido on ibrahim in this tutorial video i will be making a review on eating beam whether it is economical and stable or if it is not what exactly is an eating beam and why is it used in building structures an eating beam is used in cases where the drop depth of a beam is not wanted to be seen beneath the slab the drop depth of the beam is sometimes a barrier to lighting points in a room and even sometimes it affects the other interior designs. So generally, if a beam is dropping at the center of a room where there is no wall covering the beam, it will affect the aesthetics of that room. So in order to have a proper clear height in a room or office, eating beams are used. So eating beams are those kind of beams that have their width to be larger than their depth. Also, the depth of an eating beam is usually equivalent to that of the slab. An example of it is what you can see in this image. You can see this first one is an eating beam. Also, this other one is an eating beam. You can see that the depth of that beam is same with the depth of the slab. Although in this image, the reinforcement of the slab has not been laid. But at the end of the day, when the reinforcement of the slab is laid, it is going to have the same depth with this eating beam. Now you can check the cross section of the eating beam in this other image. This first image, it only shows the cross section of the eating beam. Why this bottom shows both the cross section of the eating beam and the slab that is in connection with the eating beam. In this first image, you can see that we have a link, a four leg link that is connecting a five top ribbers and a five bottom ribbers. Okay. And then here you can see the eating beam and then you can see the other parts, this red part, that is the longitudinal um, bars of the slab and this blue, that is the transverse bars of the slab. So now that you know what a concealed beam is and you know what it is used for, we can now make our review if eating beam is economical and stable or if it is not economical and stable. Even if it is stable, we still want to consider the amount of materials in terms of concrete and reinforcement that will be used to achieve its stability in comparison with a dropping beam. And I'll be making the review with a software called Prota Structure. This is a simple drawing that I made for the purpose of this tutorial. Um, and then you can see that at this portion here, we have the veranda. Around here, we have um, the window. You can see W1 and something like that. It does not really matter. But I deliberately put the name of each room so that we can identify what we have there. So this is the veranda. And around here we have the sitting room okay so up to this portion it is still the city room and then you can check all this place this is um guest toilet this is store and then this is kitchen this is also uh, a veranda um, all this place is the lobby this portion is the bedroom and then here we have the toilet and then here there is another bedroom here now the concentration will be in this panel you can see that this panel is the sitting room so this panel at the top here is part of the sitting room also this place is part of the sitting room so this is the boundary of the sitting room but if we only have a single slab for the boundary of this sitting room the slab will be too large and then it will obviously fail the deflection test so in order to disperse the load of the slab i had to put a beam at the center and that is um 1b47 so i had to use this beam 147 to split the city room into two so now we can have two panels you can see i have one s15 which is panel 15 slab 15 and then there's another one slab 16. so this beam is splitting these two panels but the whole of this panel and this other panel is still the sitting room now this is the issue i do not want this beam to be seen beneath the slab when you are looking from the bottom definitely if this beam is having a drop below the slab it will be seen and then it can be affecting the bulb if the bulb is not a chandelier or something if it's just a bulb attached directly to the ceiling 
it will be blocking the coverage of the bulb so i had to make sure that this beam is not seen below the slab i have to make sure it is a concealed beam all right now when you see the dimension of this slab the damage uh, the thickness of this slab is 150 mm in that case i also made this beam to be 150 so the width of this beam is 450 while the depth is 115. that tells you that this beam 147 is a concealed beam it is an hidden beam so now let's go ahead and then do the analysis and design and then we can check the number of reinforcements and then other parameters that we use to make our review and then you can go to analysis the analysis has been run before but i can just run it one more time um go to analysis and then loading combinations obviously that should be done before you can make any analysis so um click on yes and then edit material i am more interested in the concrete beam so i will ignore all other things rebar diameter i'll pick 16 i'll pick 20 and then i can also pick um 25 so click on ok and then ok now i can go to analysis um i do not want to display analytical method so you go to build analysis beam reinforcement reselect bar building analysis okay the analysis has been completed so i'll click on close the beam we are interested in is beam 47, 1B47. So I'll go to post analysis and then I'll check beam 147. So it is the last beam here. You can see it here, beam 147. So I'll double click on it. You can see the utilization ratio. It is good, 0.78. So you double click on that. Now, when you check this, you will see that the design is doing fine. The design is perfect. However, the deflection is failing. The deflection calculated is 38.65 however the permissible is 30.35 so it is failing the deflection check and that is normal because beams they carry load with depth not with width so this is one of the problems you will be facing with a concealed beam all right so um let's check um the number of bars we have I can just change everything to 16 in order to make it easier we have 40 16 at the bottom so um, let me try to change this to um, 16 as well so um, 16 then i have to keep increasing the number until we do not have um, a negative sign over here so i'll increase to five increase to six seven eight so this is good so at the top i have 8 16 and at the bottom i have 40 16 so it can be said that this particular concealed beam will take a total of 12 numbers of y16 reinforcement in order to create this simple beam okay so this parameter of number of reinforcement will be used to make decision on the economic review of the of the beam all right so uh, let's just move on and consider the parameters that will be used to make conclusion on the stability so i'll click on ok and then i can go to beam capacity report so double click on this or just click once and click on ok now we are having an error click on continue i would have loved to check the beam capacity report of the beam so that i can deduce the shear capacity and the shear resistance of that beam but unfortunately i'm in country and error so we have to do something else in order to make our review on stability so now we will have to consider the moment of inertia of this beam moment of inertia is usually denoted with letter i and its unit is millimeter raised to power 4 or centimeter raised to power 4 or meter raised to power 4 depending on what you are using okay and then why is it important the moment of inertia is important in sizing of structural elements and it plays a major role in the bending stress it also plays a major role in the critical buckling of column and then flexural rigidity and most importantly the deflection in this image you can see five different type of beam and how they are loaded now if you check all these five beams you realize they have something in common 
one they have e which is the young modulus they have it in common young modulus has to do with the type of material you are using maybe you are using concrete you are using steel aluminium or wherever then the other thing they have in common is i and that is the moment of inertia now you can see how important moment of inertia is in determining the deflection of a beam so when you have a wrong choice of sizing that will influence the value of your moment of inertia then you should be expecting the result in your deflection and of course that has to do with the stability of your beam now let's pay attention to the first category of the beam which is the concealed beam now let's take the first parameter which is the moment of inertia so this particular one has been sized to be 150 by 450 the depth is 150 mm which is equivalent to the depth of the slab and the width of the beam is 450 mm okay now if we determine the moment of inertia for this beam it is a rectangular beam and for a rectangular beam, this is the formula for the moment of inertia, which is bh cube divided by 12. Okay, so if you put all these values into this 450 multiplied by 150 cube divided by 12, we'll be having a value of 1.27 times 10 raised to power of 8. This is the moment of inertia for this beam. And back from the moment of inertia of the beam, we also need to determine the load carrying capacity of that beam, and which is the, um, the compressive strength. The formula is compressive load divided by the surface area. Okay, so to get the surface area, we know that the um, the width is 450, but we also need to know the length of the beam. So we can confirm the length of the beam from here. Just go to um, story beams, and then where is the beam? This is the beam. 1b47 okay so we have 38 3, that is the clear span but we need to determine the center to center okay so this is 225 beam this is 230 beam so at the end of the day when you had half of this with half of this you are going to arrive at um this value which is 4208 all right so now i am assuming a value of our compressive load you know we can just make an assumption so whatever assumption we make we are going to use the same assumption for the other category of beam which is a dropping beam because we are making a comparison between a hidden beam and a dropping beam okay so i'm making an assumption of the compressive load to be 5000 kilo newton all right so at the end of the day when you do the mathematics you will arrive to 2.64 newton per mm squared so this is the load carrying capacity of this beam when we have it sized like this and this is the value for the moment of inertia if we have it sized like this okay i am going to end the video here in the next video we'll be considering the number of reinforcements the moment of inertia and the load carrying capacity of a dropping beam and then we can now make our conclusion if an hidden beam is better than a dropping beam in terms of economy and stability or if it is otherwise so watch out for the next video and if you like this video kindly give it a like if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel make sure you give it a subscription because that really matters to me Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.